I mean, when you look back on it, I mean, yes, your career has been so successful, mm. but the jungle and winning it was sort of like a rebirth of your career, wasn't it? it well, until, to be honest with you, I was on, um, uh, I was doing six days a week on the radio until I read in a newspaper that I was going out there to rescue my career. I thought I was doing quite well. <laughs> but it's, uh, but, but you it were did, doing more telly work and lots of more yes, opportunities came out. Yes, I mean, it was one of those things that, I mean, I love doing it. The reason why I, uh, my agent rang me up and said, would you like to go into the Australian jungle? And I was 60 years old then. And, uh, be, and just be dropped there and survive. And I said, yeah, that's a great idea. And I thought he was joking. <laughs> and then I got this phone call and said, they'd like you to do it. So I did. And I absolutely adored it. I love yeah. doing it. It's, it's much more extreme now. You're vegetarian, now. though, aren't you? I am, yeah. So did you have to eat the bugs? And how did that work well, out no, with I went, vegetarianism? No, I went into... The researcher said to me, you know, do you like outdoor life? I said, well, not particularly. I said, presumably... And they described what the show was. I said, well, I'm a vegetarian. I wouldn't kill anything. So I actually let things out. You know, if, if there's a spider at home, I let it out, you know. I wouldn't kill it. No. And so um, and so I said, uh, I, they said, well, how would you survive? I said, I don't know, really. I said, um, I hadn't beans. really thought about that. Rice yeah. and beans, weren't it? That's all yeah. I ate as well. I didn't but, eat anything out there. No, but I just thought the, I thought the whole idea of the show, because I'm glad I was on the first one, because I didn't know what it was going to be yeah. like. <laughs> and it was a great ignorance. one, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, I love the people who say, I don't know why I came in this show. You think, yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I loved it. I had a great time. Yeah, yeah I, I was like a holiday, well. a proper real holiday, because there's great. no phones, no, no papers, no pens, no books, and no family. I no never children. looked so good, I tell you. <laughs> I lost so much weight, my skin and everything, no wine, no nothing. Yeah. You know, like, well, I think, when I come out oh, there. Come on, you look lovely now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take you back to the music, actually, because, uh, I mean, how many radio stations do you work for these days? Well, I work for six radio stations every week. Um, <laughs> I work Radio 2, of course, Pick of the Pots, but I also work... Uh, on Sundays, I'm on five different radio stations, oh three God. live. So I start at 9 o'clock in the morning and I'm on a Radio Berkshire when I'm on, actually... Um, let me see, I'm on BBC Three Counties at the same time doing a different show. Not... Uh, I've recorded. I record two shows during the week, then I'm on five times, five different radio stations. We were all reminiscing earlier yeah. about... Radio Caroline and the, oh, yeah. the crackly kind of in and yeah. out and whatever. And then, of course, you were first on Radio, Radio 1, 1, weren't yeah, you? How do you remember how you Simon started Day. that first sentence? Oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know that I know, I know the record I played. Yes. The first record I played was Rag Doll by the Four Seasons. Yeah. And I met. Well, on Radio 1? No, that, no, that was uh, Flowers oh. in the Rain. Yeah, the, the, the first record I played on the Pirate Ships was four o'clock in the afternoon in 1964. And it was ragged all by the Four Seasons. And I met Frankie Valley, and I went up to him at Radio Two, and he didn't know me. I said, "I'm I'm Tony Blackburn." I said, "I just wanted to say I love your music." And the very first record I ever played was one of yours. He couldn't have given a damn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first record I played in Radio Two was Afternoon Delight. But I was saying things like, "I'll be your Afternoon Delight," without realizing it was all a bit risque. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. So what do you think about the start the, of vocal band? What do you think <laughs> about sort of the modern um, definition now of a DJ? DJ and how it's how it's well, been. It, it, if you work if you work on a BBC station, you're allowed to be a personality still. On on commercial radio, uh, I'm lucky because I, I'm allowed to do what I want and I pick all my own music. Mm. Uh, but most people, it's you know, it's 28 in a row and a time check, and that's all it is now. And that's not my way of doing it, and I wouldn't mm. want to do that. Yeah, I get to pick three hours of my show, all of do the you? music, you all of the guests. Yourself. That's at BBC yeah. Six Music, just mm. to, just so <laughs> people don't know. Um, Tony, mm. I want to know if it's true, because I've read that John Peel used to pull your leg because you loved soul music. I mean, I, I'm a huge mm. fan of soul music. Yeah. Is this true? Yeah. Well, he didn't exactly pull my leg. He, he, um, he said to me that, you know, soul music goes a lot to you because I introduced uh, Motown into this country, you know, on the pirate ships because nobody was playing it. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, would you say that? And he said, no, I'll never give you that credit. No. Yeah, <laughs> so I said, because, I don't know, it was a funny thing with John Peel. I think I started out badly with John when I opened up Radio 1 and his programme was much more minority. And I always saw Radio 1 as a pop music station for everybody and I thought the kids coming back in the evening would like that. So I suggested that John should be on Radio 3. And I meant that as a serious thing, but he took it badly, and from that moment on, I don't oh. think... How, how did the corny jokes all sort of, like, did you just sort of develop those over the years? Because we expect them now, we well, do. I always found them funny, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I got a lot of that from... Uh, I don't know, it's just... It's British sense of humour, isn't it? Have you got it? one for us today? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. What a joke. Yeah. A joke. I've got one for you. I got my... I use my ears as book... Um, I've got 20 joke books in my head, I use my ears as bookends. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we, we must no. move it on. Okay. To... <laughs> As Paul said in our press conference, when 
got back home, you know, and he was pouring tea. His apartment in New York, there was a couple of ants going yeah. across. And, you know, before this movie, he would boom. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't. Now I'd yeah. go, no, they're on a mission. 